Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen risen indeed. Hallelujah. Well, here we are. It is Easter. We have been on quite the journey. A journey of witnessing grace upon grace. It started back a couple nights ago on Thursday when Jesus knit us into communion together through laying hands on us, washing our feet, and feeding us with life-giving food, all of which filled us with God's love, mercy, and forgiveness. From there, we witnessed the mystery of the cross as we stood in awe of God's ability to take such a thing of death and turn it into life. Tonight, we began our journey again with the lighting of the new fire, a reminder that when things seem darkest, God shows up to light the world with a new birth, a new creation. And then we listen to the stories of old, stories that remind us that God has been working on the salvation of the cosmos from the beginning of creation. Stories that point us to the ultimate moment in time where our weeping turns to joy, our sorrow into song, as we celebrate that Christ is risen. We have walked this entire journey experiencing all these means of grace, so that we too, like Mary to the disciples, can proclaim, I have seen the Lord. Now, this statement of Mary's is a profound one. It is a statement that means so much more than Mary giving witness to the fact that she physically saw Jesus in the garden. For it is also a statement of great faith. You see, in the entirety of John's Gospel, we have this question posed to us. Whom are you looking for? We hear Jesus first ask this question when the first two disciples come to him. Their response is to ask Jesus, Lord, where are you abiding? Which, of course, leads Jesus to telling them, come and see. Then we hear Jesus ask this question again in the garden on the night of his betrayal. When all the soldiers come to arrest Jesus, Jesus asks them, whom are you looking for? Unfortunately, the soldiers do not have a clue about Jesus, so it isn't surprising that when Jesus tells them, I am, that they fall all to the ground. But then we come to the garden, where Mary is weeping because she does not yet understand that Christ is risen. So Jesus appears to her, and he asks her, Who are you looking for? At first, Mary is so stricken by her grief that she cannot recognize that it is the Lord. But then he speaks her name, Mary. Immediately, Mary sees Jesus and remembers. In that moment, Mary remembers the signs, the water turned to wine, the lame man picking up his mat and walking the feeding of the 5,000, the opening of the eyes of the man born blind. And Mary remembers what Jesus had told them just a few nights ago in the upper room. Mary remembers and she believes in Jesus as the Son of God. Because of this, her witness to the disciples becomes the very first witness of the good news that Christ is risen. That is what this journey is all about. Experiencing grace upon grace so that we come to believe and proclaim the risen Christ. The good news that death has lost its sting, that God has indeed redeemed the world, and that we are now in full communion with God, for there are no more barriers that can separate us from God the good. For when Jesus touched our foreheads with gentle hands and spoke to us in a comforting voice, your sins are forgiven, God grew our faith. And when the pouring out of love drenched our feet like a spring in the desert, 
And as we cup the feet of another to pass on the love, God drew us into communion together. It's when we saw the violence of the altar being stripped of its beauty, and when we gazed upon the rough edges of the cross, God drew our wonderment and our amazement. And when we gathered around the warmth of the flames and the new fire, God drew the fire in our hearts, a burning passion for joyous proclamation that the light of the world cannot be overcome by darkness. And God did all of this so that we too would rush out to others and proclaim, we have seen the Lord. You know, the great thing about these holy three days is that the liturgy is very intentional about pointing us towards the means of grace that help to remind us of God's imminent love for us, as well as the joy of the resurrection. I said imminent, I meant immense love for us. <laughs> but what about on Monday? What about one week from now? What about later this year or in years to come? Will we still remember the grace upon grace? Will we still be as joyous and eager to proclaim the risen Christ? Well, that is where tonight comes in. What we do for the rest of this holy night is we come to experience even more grace upon grace. As we continue tonight, we will come and experience the two biggest means of grace that are the biggest sustainers of our faith. First, we will gather around the Father, and we will once again renew our commitment to God to live out the baptismal promises in our daily lives. Then we will come forward, and we will experience Jesus in the cool water of the Father that touches our foreheads as we make the sign of the cross. And it will also come in the fragrance of the oil that will anoint us and to remind us that we have been claimed as God's own child. From there, we will come to the table. For Jesus will invite us forward to taste and see that the Lord is good. At the table, we will be in total communion with God and with each other, and with each other as we all partake in the bread of life of salvation. As we are given that small piece of bread, and as the wise is poured into our cups, we will be reminded of the outpouring of Jesus' love that came down from the cross and flowed into the baptismal font so that we were washed with it, being forever tied to death and resurrection. But not only will these means of grace sustain us so that we can go out into the world fed and nourished in the risen Christ. But God promises that they will be here each and every week for us. God knows this Christian journey is not an easy one, and that the power of evil can still influence us. So God provides us. God provides us with an abundance, an abundance of grace upon grace each week, so that we can continue on in our proclaiming of the good news to a broken and a hurting world. Tonight, we complete this journey of the Holy Three Days as we begin this big celebration of Easter, of Christ resurrected, of the joy of salvation here and now. But that is not the end. God isn't done with us yet. Yes, indeed, the tomb is empty. Yes, indeed, we sing our hallelujahs all the more. But really, this grace upon grace, this resurrected Jesus, he's just getting started.